Now, from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Coming up tonight on the news, the latest on two murder trials making national headlines. Plus, details on the longest partial lunar eclipse in nearly 600 years. But first, a plan to fight racism at UNL being met with some mixed reactions. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. UNL has released a new initiative to fight racism and promote transparency on campus. But some, including state leaders, aren't too happy about the new plan. Channel 8's Alexis Kineski has more in our top story tonight. Alexa? Yeah, that's right. UNL leaders are taking the next steps to strengthen diversity and equity on campus, but some see this as a step backwards. They say it sends a clear message. Conservative students, staff and thoughts are not welcome on campus. There is no way that we can be a university of the people if we are not thoughtful and mindful about how we eliminate barriers and increase opportunities. This journey puts us on that pathway. After protests erupted over George Floyd's murder last summer, some UNL students spoke out and Chancellor Ronnie Green listened. UNL has now released a new initiative to fight racism on campus. It includes regular anti-racist teaching seminars, reviewing UNL's hiring process in the context of race and working with the police to prevent unfair treatment of minority members. This brings a lot of hope for some students. Larger voices on campus, especially when it comes to like administrators, I think having them promoted is really important because it shows that the people in charge are actually caring about students and how they feel safe and included on campus. But not everyone is thrilled with the new plan. Nebraska Senator Julie Slama took to social media saying the university has spoken loud and clear. If you do not strictly adhere to extreme woke culture, you are not welcome on campus. She went on to say this decision was made without approval from university regents and your tax dollars are going to support a plan to force critical race theory and build and sustain anti-racist infrastructure. And governor candidate Jim Pillen has spoken against the plan as well, saying it violates laws. In a statement on Facebook, he says the Board of Regents has not approved this so-called journey. To call Nebraska students and staff racist is wrong. To give preferential treatment in hiring based on race is wrong. Now that plan is already in effect. The university says factually this is not something that requires Board of Regents approval. They say they have worked carefully to ensure state law in the Nebraska Constitution was not violated. And Alexa, just moments ago, the governor also giving his two cents on this. Yep, Pete Ricketts is calling on the chancellor to drop the plan and avoid div divisive policies. He says the plan would inject critical race theory throughout the campus. And of course, we'll be keeping an eye on this. Thank you, Alexa, for our top story tonight. Uh, Thanksgiving, if you can believe it, is just a week away, and some people have taken a more local approach to their meal. Yeah, opting for a fresh turkey from a local farm only an hour and a half up the road. Heritage Turkey Farm says people are more curious about what they put in their bodies these days, and the family-owned business there is happy to share how they raise their birds. They don't know necessarily where a turkey from the supermarket comes from. Here they know this turkey was... We I mean, if you follow our Facebook page, you could follow their whole life. The West Point Farm has been raising turkeys for more than 20 years now and raises about 150 of them every year. Turkeys for 2021 are already sold out. But you can sign up for a turkey next year and get some cooking tips through the links we mentioned tab on our website, klknTV.com. And speaking of the holiday, holiday, I'm sure many of us are getting our grocery list together for the big meal. That's right. ABC's Becky Worley has some tips for you on how to save online and on delivery. Goodbye coupon wars and hello delivery discounts. During COVID, grocery delivery has literally been a lifesaver and it's starting to feel like a way of life. So the job now is to streamline savings and keep the deliveries coming. One of the biggest saving strategies is trying to avoid delivery fees. The minimum order size for free delivery varies. Stop and Shop is $60, Publix is $10, and Safeway Albertsons is $30. Now you can't avoid delivery fees with many grocers if you subscribe to their membership service. But unless you're a power user of that particular store, the subscription fee may not make financial sense. 
Many new players are also entering this space. Right now, that's Aldi. When a new brand enters the market, it means they might be willing to lose money on certain products to gain your business. Check out discounting and free delivery offers. What about coupons? Can you use those for shopping online with delivery? Well, no scissors needed. They're all online now. Take Target. If you go to their deals page, you'll see discounted items, and those price cuts are applied automatically. Finally, for household items like paper products and cleaning supplies, the bulkiness of the items often means they're more expensive online. To get these bulky items delivered, it cost me $18 more than if I'd actually shopped at Costco. It was $106 bucks versus $88. But here's the thing. When have I ever gotten out of Costco for under $200? With delivery, I made no discretionary purchases. And this is the number one way that shopping online for groceries can save you money. There are fewer temptations to buy food on impulse. Online grocery shopping really helps people stick to their shopping list. There you go, some nice tips. Let's mm -hmm. continue to uh, look ahead now to the upcoming holidays. Right now, small businesses are bracing themselves for what is shaping up to be a challenging holiday rush amid supply chain concerns. Competition giants like Amazon, Walmart, and Target, it's always complicated for small sellers, but right now they are at an even higher disadvantage as those bigger retailers have the money to spend to circumvent supply chain bottlenecks. So I'm just hoping that we are going to communicate that well enough and that our customer knows that, you know, it's not necessarily us dropping the ball, that it's just kind of the situation we're in. Many of these small businesses are hoping the more personalized experience they can offer will attract those holiday shoppers. All right, uh, let's get the latest on your weather. For that, we check in with Chief Meteorologist John Dishauer. How's it going tonight? Tonight, things are looking pretty good nice outside. We've got clear skies around the area, and as you can see, we're going to take a live look outside. And Many of you have heard there's a lunar eclipse coming on tonight as we go through the overnight hours, and here's a view of the main actor already starting to uh, make an appearance into the sky. This is a live view from Southeast Community College as the moon is now just beginning to rise up into the sky. We've got clear skies outside right now. However, that may not be the case as we go through the overnight hours. Look back to the west and you can see we've got clouds on the move from coming out of Wyoming and South Dakota, moving off to the east and southeast, and that will play a role in tonight's uh, appearance of the partial lunar eclipse coming our way. Otherwise, temperatures right now on the cool side, it's 43 degrees in Lincoln, 42 in Beatrice, only 44 in Hastings, and only 40 degrees right now in Columbus. For the rest of this evening, clear skies at 6, clear skies at 8, and the clouds start to move in by 10 o'clock. We'll see them increasing as we go through the overnight hours, and as I mentioned, that could play a role in what you can see from tonight's lunar eclipse. Coming up in a few minutes, we'll detail what cloud cover percentage will be like in your specific cities uh, throughout southeast Nebraska as we go through the overnight hours if you want to go outside and take a look at it. Also, a warm up is coming our way. So today's cooler temperatures will be saying goodbye pretty quickly. That's coming up in just a few minutes. All right, John, we'll talk to you later. National News Now. Jurors in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial are now on day three of deliberations. The 18 year old is accused of shooting three people, killing two of them during protests last summer. Wisconsin's governor has organized 500 National Guard members in anticipation of protests, and several public school campuses near the courthouse have gone to online classes to keep students away from possible unrest. And in southern Georgia now, the three men charged with murdering Ahmad Arbery in February of 2020. That trial continues. Video shows them chasing the 25-year-old as he was out jogging. After confronting him, scuffle broke out, ending with Arbery being fatally shot. Didn't pull out any guns. No, ma'am. Didn't pull out any knife. No, ma'am. Never reached for anything, did he? Uh, no. He just ran. Yes, he was just running. McMichael right there, his father and a neighbor believed Arbery matched the description of someone who had been recorded trespassing at a nearby construction site and chased him down to make a citizen's arrest. Each man has pled not guilty to felony murder. If convicted, they could each face life in prison. Closing arguments are set for 9 a.m. on Monday. Still ahead on the news tonight, you're going to want to watch uh, the moon tonight, as John was talking about, for something nearly 600 years in the making. That and your full forecast after the break.
A fire in Grand Island forced an assisted living home to be evacuated. And we're now learning from police that the community rallied to save people from the flames. And we're very appreciative to the people that use their personal vehicles to help get residents um, in, inside somewhere so they're out of the cold. Um, and then Head Start, uh, they uh, had an employee come down who was willing to open their doors so we could transfer people over there uh, while we're waiting to figure out where everyone can go. So really appreciate everyone coming together to help us out and, and help these residents out. The fire happened at Ed Edgewood Memory Care. Grand Island Police say 13 residents were evacuated and no injuries were reported. Officials are still investigating what caused the blaze. And hey, another reminder, look up tonight for the longest partial lunar eclipse in nearly 600 years. It's set to happen late tonight and into tomorrow morning. It is expected to last nearly three and a half hours and will be very close to a full eclipse. NASA says it will cover more than 97% of the moon. It can be seen from anywhere in the country as long as skies are clear. Will we have clear skies? It's time to check in with John. No. Your storm alert team forecast with Chief Meteorologist John DeSauer. That is the big question for tonight. We've got clear skies outside right now. If we could just stop the atmosphere from moving from this moment on, yeah, we would have a great chance of seeing it. However, clouds are going to be on the increase as we go through the overnight hours. Taking a live look outside right now from Southeast Community College, you can see the moon that's now beginning to rise and getting a higher into the sky, but I take you to the other direction that, that was looking off to the east. This is looking off to the southwest. A beautiful sunset taking place right now from Honda of Lincoln, but look out along the horizon. You are starting to see some clouds. Those are all coming this direction, and you can see that on the satellite imagery uh, clouds in the western portion of the state. These are all moving off to the east and southeast, and we're going to see our skies increasing with clouds tonight. Now here are the details on tonight's partial lunar eclipse. Uh, it starts to begin, or at least the partial eclipse begins at 1 8 tonight. This is not something that's going to happen in three minutes. This is going to be an all night process. The greatest eclipse will be at 303 in the morning and then the partial eclipse comes to an end by 447. So you got to be a late night uh, person to be able to see that or a very early riser tomorrow morning to be able to see it. Now here's the question cloud cover. We're going to look at storm cast show you how clouds move in and each one of these percentages is a percentage of cloud cover in the skies over each individual city. So pick a city where you're going to be near or where you'll be in tonight and it'll give you an idea of what your views will look like. As we go through 115 as the partial eclipse begins, we could be seeing clear skies in Lincoln, uh, same in Stewart and York, but notice out towards Grand Island and out towards Kearney, clouds are on the increase with 68% cloud cover out in the Kearney area. As we go through uh, the greatest of eclipse, we're going to see 71% coverage of cloud cover in Lincoln, 72% coverage in Seward, maybe some better chances down towards Beatrice and Fairbury, and we'll see overcast skies out towards Grand Island. And then as the eclipse comes to an end, we'll see uh, still some mostly cloudy skies outside. Now temperatures right now are on the cool side. We normally should be up to right around 51 degrees. We only made it into the mid 40s this afternoon. Uh, 45, make that 46 degrees was the high temperature. 42 is the current temperature in Beatrice and 41 degrees is the temperature right now in New York. Overnight, we'll see low temperatures dipping down into the mid 20s. That's likely going to happen by midnight to one o'clock in the morning. As those clouds I just talked about, as they begin to move in, that will allow our temperatures to start to rise. Our winds will also shift around from the south, and that's going to help bring some warmer temperatures our direction. So now out of the question, we could be in the mid 30s by the time you're heading off to work and school tomorrow morning. This is looking at 8 a.m. You can see temperatures in the 30s with the clouds overhead. They will continue as we go throughout the day. By noontime, temperatures into the upper 40s. I think by afternoon, we should be able to make it up into the lower to mid 50s. So some warmer temperatures coming our way tomorrow. Watch out for the wind though. Out of the south, 10 to 25 miles per hour, gusting at times to 45 miles per hour. Again, highs into the 50s. Seven day forecast, 50s continue on Saturday, mostly cloudy skies. We turn breezy on Sunday as a cold front comes through. I should also mention, Saturday night. It's not out of the question we could have a light shower in a couple locations as that front passes, but most of us should remain dry. As we go into next week, uh, besides Tuesday with a slight warm up, 
Uh, and turning breezy, we are going to stay on the cool side. 49 degrees on Wednesday. Thanksgiving looks to be cool right now. 41 degrees. Game day against uh, Iowa on next Friday. 43 degrees. And then going into next weekend, temperatures in the mid 40s. And as many people are heading home next Sunday, uh, we'll see temperatures in the mid 40s as well. Oh, now there's two seals on the 10 day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just now you had to explain for people who weren't watching last night. <laughs> I thought the airplane looked like a seal. From our from, vantage point. Yeah, yeah, from our TVs that are pretty far away. I couldn't tell what was on there yesterday and now he's added another one. But uh, no, I was curious. Are you going to get up to watch the lunar eclipse? You know, it's pretty close to my bedtime anyway. What's another half hour or so? <laughs> it's kind of what I figured. Up, you know. Yeah. Are you going to get up, John? I, I, I've seen it. Um, probably not. Wait, I thought this was the first one like nearly 600 Come years. On, this. You've been alive for 600 years? Do you <laughs> know where the there, fountain there, of youth there, is? I took that picture I showed off during my, the uh, graphic showing the, you the, the picture of it. Uh, that was actually taken in 2014 by me out in Colorado. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much, John. And as we get ready to celebrate Thanksgiving with our family and friends. Medical experts say we still need to take some uh, extra precautions. We talked with Dr. Bob around here president of the Partnership for a Lincoln, uh, a Healthy Lincoln. He recommends a layered approach when it comes to holiday gatherings, including making sure everyone is vaccinated and using rapid COVID-19 tests. I'm vaccinated and healthy. My chances are pretty low, but they're not zero. So I'll probably get a rapid test and before people show up, test myself just as an added precaution so I don't, you know, infect, say, my mom or my dad. And if you plan on using at-home tests, you might want to order them online so they can get here in time for Thanksgiving. Many pharmacies across the country are out. And with hospitals being stretched so thin during COVID-19 surges, it may have led to deaths that could have been avoided. That's according to a new report from the CDC. When intensive care units across the country were at 75% or greater capacity, they say there were over 90,000 excessive deaths two weeks later. Now, an excessive death is defined as the difference between the observed and expected number of deaths during a specific time period. And the average number of new daily COVID-19 cases is rising once again in the U.S. A new study shows a common medicine may reduce the risk of death in someone infected with the coronavirus. A new study published in JAMA finds evidence that people infected with COVID-19 who were already taking certain antidepressants were less likely to die. These drugs probably have some un off target effect that might have an effect on uh, impact on, on treating COVID-19. Dr. Sirota is one of the study's authors. She says patients taking medication widely sold under the brand name Prozac were 28 percent less likely to die from COVID-19. Those taking that medication or a related drug known as fluvoxamine or Luvox were 26 percent less likely to die. The idea is that there's probably some link between inflammatory and the immune system and serotonin, and maybe these drugs are having, that's why these drugs might be having an effect. Dr. Sirota says it's unclear what causes this possible reduction in death. She says more research is needed to determine that. And officials say other small studies saw similar results. A split day on Wall Street, the Dow falling 51 points, NASDAQ up 72, here are your numbers. You're watching Channel 8, Nebraska's trusted news source.
Finally tonight, some lost hikers are okay after they were lucky to be found by a scout. And 40 female skydivers break records in midair. All in tonight's Take a Look at This. A pair of hikers lost on a Hawaiian trail learned to be prepared from someone who knows the rule well, a 12-year-old Boy Scout who used his wilderness skills to help them and their dog out of a jam. David King and his mother were hiking along a trail in Kailua when they found the couple lost with no water, depleted cell phones, and an injured 100-pound dog. David used his merit badge skills to craft a stretcher for the animal out of t-shirts and tree branches, and the group was able to get the dog and themselves back to safety. The resourceful scout later added to being prepared his own golden rule, always listen to instructions and what you're learning in class. In Nebraska, it was a dog to the rescue, offering assistance to nervous COVID-19 vaccine patients by just being cute and cuddly. The Three Rivers Health Department is using comfort animal Katie to put kids' minds at ease during the required 15-minute waiting period following the shot. I like it. Yeah. Why do you like it? Uh, because she calms me down. When it comes to lending a helping paw, Katie is a seasoned pro. She's traveled the country with the Canine Comfort Dog Ministry, providing comfort to victims of natural disasters. Finally, take a look at this. 40 female skydivers from all over the world gathered to make three separate formations in one 16,000 foot jump in the skies over Arizona. One of the videographers who captured the stunning high flying feat says it ended up breaking two separate skydiving records. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Well, how about that? Mm. Nebraska making tonight's Take a Look at This with mm -hmm. the uh, puppies, dogs? Yes, Katie, Katie. the comfort dog. Oh. That's a good story. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's get a final check of the weather with John. Yeah, the skies are clear outside right now. We'll be able to see the moon at least for the next few hours. As we go through the overnight, we'll, we'll start to see clouds on the increase. Temperatures will start to drop pretty quickly, down to 31 by 8, 31 degrees by 10. We'll likely have our high temperature between midnight and 1 o'clock, or make that our low temperature, between midnight and 1 o'clock in the morning, and then temperatures start going up during the morning as clouds start to move in. All right, thank you, John. Thank you all for joining us. World News is coming up next with David Muir. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock. With the Channel 8 Eyewitness News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. Get a load of the DQ Loaded A1 Steakhouse Burger, stacked with thick cut bacon, crunchy onion rings, and two premium steak sauces. This is one burger that needs two hands. Get it delivered.